B. How useful has an ideological critical approach been in understanding binary oppositions in the narratives of your chosen films? This is worth 40 marks. And here's the answer. Binary oppositions are concepts that appear opposite, but actually need each other to define their meaning. Binary oppositions are often used in film and other narratives to achieve a narrative or aesthetic tension. To analyse a narrative by drawing up binaries can help map the key ideas and themes of the film, and indeed reveal its ideological work. In this way, Levi Strauss's theories relating to binary opposition has proven invaluable in terms of understanding the narratives of both Trainspotting and Shaun of the Dead. There are many examples of binary opposition in both my case studies. In Trainspotting, the main character Renton is usually in direct binary opposition to his so-called friends. For instance, although he is just as addicted as them, Begbie is addicted to violence, not drugs, Renton has the fortitude to keep trying to quit heroin. In this respect, he is in direct binary opposition to his friend Sick Boy. The key scene where this is underlined is near the beginning where he first announces to his dealer Swanee that he's quitting using the Sick Boy method. Swanee mocks Renton by gesturing to a drugged sick boy and saying, oh, it really worked for him, eh? To which Renton replies, well, he's always been lacking in moral fibre. This is indeed true, as sick boy is represented as someone who lacks morality and fortitude because he cons his friends and can't or won't quit heroin on his own accord. Indeed, upon the death of his infant daughter due to his negligence, Sick Boy becomes fully nihilistic and unsympathetic as a character, whereas Renton, whom is more empathetic as a character, is thus more sympathetic to an audience. This is a pattern that follows when comparing him to his other friends, because by comparison to them, Renton rep is represented as stronger and more likeable. Even more reprehensible than Sick Boy is Begbie who is sadistic and bullying to everyone, including his so-called friends. He is Renton's binary opposition because, unlike Begbie, Renton is generally peaceful and good-natured. This difference between them is particularly noticeable in the scene after Begbie accidentally attracts a transvestite at a nightclub. Renton is more enlightened than Begbie, whom is ashamed of not noticing the person he pulled wasn't actually a woman. Renton tries to make light of it, and jokes to Begbie that it might have been wonderful had he gone along with the situation. Begbie immediately pounces on Renton, pounds him to the wall, with one hand on Renton's neck in fury. A joke's a joke, but if you mention that again I'll cut you up, Begbie growls, whilst thrusting a knife between Renton's legs. Begbie is a conflicted character, who has old-fashioned views on masculinity, whereas Renton is his binary opposite because he understands, as he says in the voiceover, that attraction has nothing to do with morality. It's, quote, just a question of who you fancy. Renton is liberal whilst Begbie is conservative in terms of how they view gender and sexuality. This is particularly ironic since both the author of the original book and Robert Carlyle, whom played Begbie, emphatically stated in interviews that Begbie is indeed a repressed homosexual, whose random acts of sickening violence were motivated by his fear of being outed. This is therefore clearly evident in the confrontation scene between Renton and Begbie. Begbie's hypocrisy is also quite evident in the opening pre credit scene, and is the binary opposite of Renton's comparatively more informed views on substance abuse. Begbie's first piece of dialogue in the film is ironic and shows Begbie's lack of self-awareness, whereas by comparison Renton is all too painfully self-aware. Begbie says about heroin, no way would I fill my body with that shite, he then pulls on a cigarette all them fucking chemicals and then he downs a whiskey no fucking way then goes to a pot a ball on the pool table Begbie is preaching against drugs because of chemicals as he puts it but he is oblivious to the fact that the whiskey he drinks and the cigarette he smokes are both full of harmful chemicals too what is more true in terms of how he is represented by the film is that Begbie, like a lot of people in society, has a problem with illegal drugs because that is what society has told him to think. Whereas society allows drugs like alcohol, the whiskey and nicotine, the cigarette, for no other reason that they have become socially acceptable drugs and conveniently heavily taxed by the same government that decides what drugs people can and can't take. 
in this sense, Begbie is also Renton's binary opposite because he is far more politically naive than Renton, whom is clever enough to see all the hypocrisies in society that Begbie isn't clever enough to see. In this sense, the binary opposite social and political views of the characters are rooted in the film's liberal ideology towards the drugs debate overall. The film, whilst acknowledging the downside to drug abuse, is honest enough to also represent why people take heroin in the first place, in that it is a thrill for them in their otherwise boring lives. However, the film ultimately falls on the side of anti-heroin ideology by the end of the film, when Renton finally chooses life and quits heroin for good, because the film understands that heroin ultimately brings addiction, illness, misery and death to those who choose to use it. Overall, an ideological critical approach has been very useful in understanding binary oppositions in the narrative of train spotting. Shaun of the Dead, by contrast, is not as sophisticated and complex as Trainspotting in terms of its use of binary opposition, but nonetheless an ideological critical approach such as binary opposition is still relatively useful in understanding it. Binary opposition occurs in many different ways in the film. For instance, the film is a linear narrative arc and focuses on the maturation of Sean, told through the metaphor of him saving the world. At the beginning of the film, Sean is represented as responsibility shy and lazy. This is why he loses his girlfriend. However, by the end of the film, Sean has matured as he has had to show leadership and resilience in the face of extreme difficulty, i.e. keeping his friends alive whilst having to deal with the loss of both his mother and stepfather. This results in him both saving them all and winning back his girlfriend. The two similarly aged people that died, Ed and David, are binary opposites of Sean in that Ed lacks Sean's maturity, which grows through the film, whilst David lacks Sean's sense of decency because he lusts after Sean's girlfriend, is uptight because he constantly poses problems while Sean is laid back enough to pose solutions, and is fundamentally indecent, such as his demand to shoot Sean's mum in the head literally just after she has just died, and Sean is grieving. During the Mexican standoff scene between the characters, further binary oppositions emerge. Diane is subordinate in David's affections to Liz, but Liz hates David. Liz is represented throughout the film as moralistic and strong-willed, whereas Diane and David aren't. This is why she manages to gently get Sean to agree to killing his mum, whereas David's insensitivity just made the situation worse, even though he reached the same conclusion as Liz, i.e. Sean's mum had to be killed before she turned in order to save the rest of them. Nonetheless, given the film's overtly satirical nature, the ideological critical approaches are too shallow and obvious to be truly useful, because the film spells out everything for the viewer, including clean-cut binary opposite characters, whereas the overtly ambiguous train spotting is helped considerably in terms of understanding through such an approach. In conclusion, an ideological critical approach does indeed provide understanding of the binary opposition of both train spotting and Shaun of the Dead. Binary opposition helps us understand the moral of both films, which are both more or less the same, albeit differing in the levels of sophistication. Both films show binary opposition in terms of individuality versus conformity in society. Renton starts off as an individualist, in that his self-destructive behaviour runs counter to that of what is expected of him by society. However, he ultimately decides to choose life by the end of the film and conform to the expectations of society by being just like you. But in the context of the film itself, the life Renton chooses at the end is as problematic as the one he's leaving behind because it involves being in the rat race any self-respecting individualist despises. Ultimately, however, the film suggests that any other road guarantees self-destruction in the end. So the only way to survive is to give in to societal conformity for no other reason than it's the lesser of two evils. By contrast, Shaun of the Dead is not as complex in terms of its sense of moral binary opposition. Shaun begins the film like Renton as selfish and failing in terms of his mastering of his own destiny. However, Shaun ultimately conforms in terms of what is expected of him as a human being on a moral level, i.e. being brave, responsible, moralistic and empathetic towards others, and is unambiguously rewarded for this as he manages to both have fun with his best friend, who is by the end of the film a zombie, whilst also being more attentive to his girlfriend and thus keeping her. 
By contrast, Renton's lesson is learned at the cost of having to leave his family and friends behind, as only through betrayal does he manage to cut himself free from the cycle of self-destruction he spent most of the film in. Binary opposition as an ideological critical approach did indeed deepen my understanding, especially in terms of my reading of Trainspotting, because through structural analysis of both films I saw the deeper meaning of both films. However, Trainspotting is more transgressive as a film, and challenges dominant ideologies in society, even if ultimately it ends up conforming to them. Whereas Shaun the Dead merely conforms to the already dominant ideologies in society without any significant challenge to it. And that got the full 40 marks. And that is the end of the exam paper.